Hi there and welcome to PIM Pure Science. Let's talk now about group think, a silent threat to your science. Group think occurs when team members minimize conflict and reach a consensus decision. This means that the team will avoid critical evaluation of alternative viewpoints. By its definition, science should be protected from the group think. However, Scientific groups are fertile ground for development of a group thing. And now I know if you're a professor, you probably think, what? Yes. And let me explain how this can actually develop without you actually even noticing it. So let's start with the application process, a process that any student or a postdoc is facing once he or she wants to change a lab or get to into a new position. So a person will look, of course, first what's a topic of interest and then look what kind of a groups are working in that field and what they are doing exactly and will send in average 10 applications in any given time and wait for the PIs to respond. In the same time, group leaders that have open positions will get uh, quite a bit of uh, motivation letters even the one that do not have open position will get regular motivation letters from people that want to work in their lab. And the only way the student will get a position and start working in a lab is if there is a match. Match between the interest of a group leader and interest of a student or a postdoc. So you would say, so what's wrong with that? And actually nothing is wrong with that, except you as a group leader would start hiring people that just think same as you. But this is only a first step. Now, once a new colleague is in the group, his highest priority will become to keep his or her boss smiling. Yes, because his or her career, your student career, depends on the signature of the boss at the end of his uh, work in the lab. If this is a PhD student, so his diploma depends on your or on a boss's signature. If he or she is a postdoc, a recommendation letter and career support depends on how happy the boss was. So what you will quickly learn while doing research for somebody is to avoid confrontation, especially if this uh, PI or a professor is in higher in the hierarchy, because the higher he or she is, the better chances of helping the PhD or a postdoc to get a new job is. The next step is that the newcomer in the lab will quickly realize that the boss's way is the best way. He or she will read few reviews or papers uh, written by the group and by the boss and quickly either define the goals or start working on the goals defined previously by the PI and start producing data. And this behavior, of course, can be easily explained if you look that science suffers on publish or perish culture so as soon as possible you need to produce and publish and suffers on overwhelming production of data. So even if you would like to question uh, the premises and assumptions made by your group, by your new group and your boss, you would need to dig deep into the literature. If you take an example of Alzheimer field that already accumulated around 65,000 paper, this would mean that you as a newcomer would need to spend next four to five years just reading to cope with all literature. So the best way is just to trust your boss and continue in his or her way. So you would learn to avoid questioning. Next issue is connected with the environment here. Of course we learn most when we are challenged. But if you on your group meetings a newcomer that raises hand every time on every meeting or a seminar to ask a question, to give criticism, what's a missing control or what experiment should be done in addition, very quickly your peers will look at you as a smart ass and sorry you will start dining yourself in cafeteria. So very quickly you will learn to avoid criticism as well. All these factors together will, will lead you, your boss and your group in what I call a magic circle of happiness. 
and that's not so bad because you will come to, to your work and to your job happy and you will stay happy. However, it may lead to development of groupthink. And one of the very certain ways how to recognize that in, you are in a groupthink is when you write a paper on your findings, submit it and get reviewers. And if everybody dismiss reviewer number three as an ignorant, that's a warning sign. It is very important for me now to emphasize, however, that now it's very easy to blame everything on a newcomer or on a student. However, groupthink happens also at the higher level in academia. I give you one example of Alzheimer field where researchers actually identified bad guys 20 years ago and we still have no treatment that would even slow down a disease a bit. So is it possible, just possible, that the whole field is suffering on a group thing? I don't know. It's up to the experts in the field to discuss that. What I care is you and your group because group thing may profoundly affect your scientific endeavors. And I know that all of you that are watching this presentation now are doing science because you want to understand stuff. And I want to take care that you are not jumping off the cliff. So let us look at few group thing symptoms which are easy to spot. The first of which is the illusion on, of invulnerability. This is very important because of course self-esteem and uh, self-confidence is important in science or in life in general, but doing too much self-confidence may actually bring you to problem. Let's look at this example of a guy jumping with a motorcycle or a car. If you are on the motorcycle and you are self-confident, you may start being oblivious to the warning signals. In this imaginary scenario, maybe nobody looked or actually saw that the car on the far right has a different license plate than other cars in a row. So could it be that a spectator by accident actually park his or her car there and you are not prepared during your jump to an extra car? If this is the case and you are too overconfident, bad for you. The other easy symptom to spot is we do it right way. Actually, we do it my way attitude. So in that case, you will notice that the group or the PI and the group are negatively stereotyping the opposition. Either they are stupid or ignorant or both. So in this kind of environment, the question is, why is my way the best way? And usually you don't get the answer on that. Because before even asking this question, you will get a friendly advice don't rock the boat. When we are talking about rocking the boat, of course we should mention also the self-employed mind guards. People in the group that have the mission, they're self-appointed, but they have a mission to protect the group from any harm, from any criticism, from anything that will kill or destroy the group harmony and its goal or in path. Of course, now I put a picture of a bad guys. However, these people are usually not bad guys. They are charismatic bodyguards. They are knowledgeable. They are, they are very nice people. And they do all of this with the best intentions to keep the harmony in the groups because they care about the group. However, this will eventually lead to self-censorship. This is a killer for scientific thinking. If you cannot raise your voice in a group meeting, in a one-to-one -one discussion in your team about the scientific goals, interpretation of results, missing controls or whatever, this is going to eventually lead to groupthink. What happens at the end is that everybody raise their hand and vote as the boss votes. On this example that I found on the internet, look at this lady on the left. She's raising her hand, but from her body behavior or body language and her fake smile, you see she does not believe it, but she does it and everybody happy. If after listening these symptoms, you recognize them in the, your group and you're now freaking out, don't worry, everything can be fixed. And here are a few advices how you can fix that and no harm done. 
first you should establish a role of a critical evaluator. This is a person in the lab and it can be on a rotating basis that will critically evaluate all group or team decisions, also interpretation of results or interpretation of papers and stuff like that. This would be his or her job and you need to stand as a group leader behind this person 100%. Since it will be on a rotating basis, nobody will be or get a tag as the bad guy. Also, in addition, you can kind of promote the culture of scanning for warning signals. For example, if you have a paper ready for submission, everybody in the group first reads a paper and then you make a meeting on which everybody give a critical opinion of it. And the task is that everybody finds at least one experiment, one control or one interpretation that you need to rethink or redo or whatever. With that way, you are making not only uh, your science better, but you are also encouraging people to think about your science carefully. In addition, everybody should scan the literature for warning signs. And if somebody finds a paper or a review that question your view or question your path, this is good. This person should be awarded and this paper take to, uh, taken seriously. Instead of ignoring it, your group should discuss it, dismantle it, and maybe even write a comment on it. In addition, if there is a problem, either scientific or about lab organization, you as a boss or the senior scientist in your group should not pre-specify solution. Before you say what you think, everybody should put their opinion and then think about it. Also, you should invite external experts to your group and discuss your science. I know that many of PIs are doing that, but mostly they are inviting their collaborators, their friends or buddies. And this is not the way you should do it. Of course, you will get some good and interesting uh, comments or suggestions. But when what you do, what, when you learn the best is when you invite your enemy, your scientific enemy. Look at these two guys, Karpov and Kasparov. They were for their whole life chess enemies. But they were best buddies when they were not playing chess. Because what they are doing, they were learning from each other. So you should do it as well. All these advices at the end will encourage a speak up culture in your group. And this will definitely dismantle groupthink. And isn't that what the real scientist should take care of? I believe yes.